What's up, volleyball fans? I'm Darren Tipton, and welcome to the VB Adrenaline Podcast. Our podcast, we will dive deep into the heart of the game, bringing you the hottest topics, prospects, and a buzz surrounding prep and college volleyball, especially the world of recruiting. In each episode, our crew will spotlight rising stars who are shaking up the national game. Plus, we will serve you the scoop on current events that have coaches and fans talking courtside. Tune in for the episodes that spotlight tomorrow's college stars, new trends in the sport, plus interviews that will keep you informed on the explosion that is volleyball in the USA. You can connect with us on social media, Instagram at vbadrenaline.com underscore and Twitter at vbadrenaline. Be part of the conversation. Share your thoughts on your favorite players, prospects, and predictions by using hashtag VBAdrenaline. So grab a seat, volleyball fans, and get ready to dive into the world of spikes, sets, and serves with the VB Adrenaline Podcast. See you there. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. And a uh, new session on, uh, session on our podcast. Uh, June 15th preview show, and one of our coaches stopping in who's getting ready for a busy, busy day, Jason Watson, uh, head coach, University of Arkansas. And coach, it's been a few months, but have you come down um, from last December's run yet? Uh, uh, a little bit, you know. I think uh, uh, you get back in the gym uh, in January and the cycle continues, right? I mean, it's the way it goes. You're prepping for another season, and um, but I, I probably took a little bit more time than I probably should have to um, to decompress and uh, enjoy. I think one of the things is that when you're in the moment, uh, it's probably hard to to enjoy it um, because you're just moving on to the next one, the next match, the next practice, and some things. And so when you get a little bit of downtime, it's nice to kind of just um, – look at it and reflect upon uh, just what a remarkable run it was by a, a great group of student athletes. Well, and, and I think that show, you were on national display. Um, we talked before we started recording about it maybe was talked about too much and over and over uh, you'd mentioned that, but that's positive for your program. Um, and I think everybody got to see the positive culture and really the love in your program. How do you think that will um, pay dividends heading into this 2026 recruiting class? Yeah, I mean, that's a fabulous question, you know, and, and that's the that's the goal. Um, and, uh, you know, the interesting thing is that we didn't do anything different as a staff, as a program uh, in 23 than we've done in previous years. You know, the way we've gone about coaching the game and prepping the team and things like that. But what I think it did show is that uh, we have a, a collection of kids at Arkansas um, that just love playing volleyball and uh, they love playing volleyball with each other. And our staff, I think, values uh, creating an environment where they get to do what they love. And um, and so it's not a chore. It's, it's not a grind. I mean, it's a grind, right, because of the length of the season and the emotional toll it takes to compete at a high level for long periods of time. But but they love playing the game. And um, and so I think we're seeing that resonate a little bit uh, as we move forward that, uh, you know, the, the goal is for athletes to identify the love of the game with Arkansas, and that's probably a pretty positive message. Have you seen anything with camps and maybe interest in the program since December over maybe previous years, or has that gone unchanged I mean, the camp space is a pretty competitive and saturated space. You know, we, we know that there's lots of people vying for athletes' time and their resources. And, you know, nobody has a, an infinite amount of time and resources. Um, but we're, we're, we're very confident. I don't know if confidence is the right word, but we're, uh, we're happy with the level of interest that we have in our camps that, that people are willing to – potentially uh, invest in coming and visiting uh, campus and um, being in, in the gym with us. So that's that's been rewarding. Um, as you said, you know, June 15th will lead into camp season. So there's a lot of uh, benchmarks that are going to happen before, you know, August 1st occurs. But but um, 
But the main level of talent that is looking at the University of Arkansas and has interest in any camp is, is going up each year. And, and that's, I think, really rewarding. Well, you have a, a couple pretty famous uh, All-Americans and alumni now. Are you going to – do you put them out on the recruiting trail for you? I mean, did they help you try and rope in some uh, PSAs and, and some recruits? Well, I, I don't know if that's a, a direct thing. Um, yeah, I think there's some legalities around uh, directing uh, alumni to uh, actively engage in that recruiting space. But um, – but I think a lot of people resonate with Jill Gillen's story. And uh, that story is still fairly relevant uh, because of her time in PVF and uh, Maggie Cartwright's time in PVF that she's with uh, Omaha. And, um, and so here are these two athletes that, you know, when they came out, probably one at the tip of the recruiting sword, you know, they, yeah. they, they, they certainly weren't, they were recruited, but they weren't at the tip of the sword. And, and, and now they're playing professionally. And, and I think I, I think it's wonderful that athletes have an opportunity to play professionally in this country that's never existed before. I think that's wonderful. But it's nice to know that, uh, the, that Arkansas is able to get some kids into that, that league and, um, and, and they can have some impact on those teams, you know. Um, so I think that helps. I think that story helps. Um, whether it's directly their involvement, I think it's more indirect at this point. Well, and we talk all the time about uh, asking athletes to talk about the five big decision makers uh, being next or being first is is one of them, right? And you guys with that crew with Jill um, and, and Curry that you talked about, they truly had a part of being first in a program with you guys going to that elite eight and doing something very rare in your program. Right. And you saw that and you saw that emotion and what it meant to them and maybe being under recruited out of club and, and what it meant. And they got to the same place that several big time programs go. Um, and, and I think that's part of the thing that a lot of programs are pitching um, that, you can get there. And a lot of times that probably means more to a program like Arkansas than other programs. Uh, certainly, you know, they, to date, uh, they can say that they played on the best volleyball team that ever played at the university of Arkansas in terms of uh, rankings and in terms of uh, depth in the tournament. Um, prior to this group, only one other team had played in the round of 16 from the university of Arkansas. Uh, now it takes a toll too. I mean, it's hard to do that, you know, and, um, and you've got to be willing to sacrifice and you've got to, you know, maybe come up short a little bit. Um, and, uh, it's going to test your resiliency and, and at Arkansas to be able to do things like that, you've got to be incredibly brave and, um, and not everybody wants that challenge. Not, and not everybody has to have that challenge, I should say. And so, um, and so that's all part of the recruiting journey for, for people. You know, what is it that you want from your, uh, your, your career? Thankfully, uh, these athletes that we had that saw their careers uh, come to a close in the round of eight uh, were committed to it and stayed. You know, they stayed at Arkansas. They, they persevered when it was really, really hard. And um, uh, I don't know if that's unique, but it's becoming rarer and rarer in college athletics that, that some people will commit to doing hard things for long periods of time. Yeah. And then, uh, so I'll leave you with uh, two things. What, what does the 15th kind of look like for you guys? Um, what's the 15th look like for your staff? Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, lots of people do it lots of different ways, but, um, and I get it. We're not a midnight crew. Um, we, we're, we're not going to need initiate conversations or anything uh, at midnight, you know. And uh, I understand that, you know, maybe if it's, you know, what is it, that Ricky Bobby thing. If you're not first, you're last or something from Talladega Nights or something. But um, uh, we're not we're not going to we're going to do that. We're going to wait for the morning and, uh, you know, we'll send out some texts and uh, schedule some calls. Uh, we're in this for the long haul. Um, uh, we think relationships are incredibly important. We think fit is incredibly important. Mutually beneficial uh, relationships are significant to us where 
uh, we think we have the resources and the ability to coach you to be better. And we also think that you fit within what it is that we're trying to do. That's a big thing for us. And, um, and, uh, and for us, it's a marathon, you know, it's not a sprint. And, and look, I think that's a message that's pretty important is there are, there are going to be kids on the 15th that know exactly where they want to go and they're going to make that decision immediately. And that's fine, you know, and, and we're not opposed to that at Arkansas, of course, but, but, but for the vast majority of recruits, uh, Hey, this is the start of a really long process. And, um, and if you look sideways at other people's processes, you're going to get frustrated and disappointed and, and things, but just stay firm. Um, uh, hey, reject time frames. I think, you know, like, Hey, this should operate under your time frame. Um, you, you want to play for a coach that's going to respect your boundaries and your career. And, and it's going to take you a little while to figure that out. Um, and so that's what we're about, you know, uh, lean on the people that are in your circle that are going to give you advice. You know, I think parents like to tell recruits, say hey, it's your decision, but at the end of the day, um, it's a family decision, right? I mean, the whole family's got to have an input into this. Um, and, um, and then go from there, you know? And, uh, and so those initial calls are, are, are wonderful. Um, and, and then we just, we keep building upon those with, with more information than they probably need or want, but, uh, but we feel obligated to give them a whole bunch of information. And, um, and so, um, so it's a great start. That's what I'll say about the 15th for us and for the, it's a great start, but it's not the end. No, coach. I, I, I think you're uh, respectfully um, completely wrong. You can't give them enough information. Yeah. Um, I think that's what we are preaching and teaching. Um, the more information like that, they need it. Um, they need to hear it and they need to hear it from sources like you. So I appreciate it. Um, and we'll let you go and enjoy the last few minutes of, I guess freedom before uh, the yeah. chaos starts for you. Uh, and uh, just, I, I want to tell you personally, I had so much fun. Um, and everybody knows I, I, I love Coach Skinner and he's a friend. I pull for him. And and uh, Z was one of my favorite kids watching us hop, look, beat him. I had so much fun cheering for you. And it was so genuine, the interviews that you did, um, even the between set interviews during that tournament. I mean, you know, so many coaches are bothered by those, and I get it. You actually enjoyed them, and you talk about enjoying the ride. You enjoyed that ride, it appeared, during that tournament, and it made it fun to tune into every one of your matches um, last year. So it was truly a joy to watch you guys. Oh, that's that's incredibly kind and generous of you. And um, uh, we have, uh, you know, I'll go Australian here on you. Uh, we have heaps of respect for Skinner and for Kentucky, you know, and, um, they're at the tip of the sword in the SEC. And that's the one team that our senior class had never beaten in the SEC until we got to that match. So there were some layers to that, that were, were incredibly rewarding for, for all of us. And, um, you know, we had gone five with Kentucky countless times and, and come up on the short end of it, you know, and that sucks, you know, but, um, but uh, yeah, it's look, I, I enjoy coaching. Uh, I love coaching the game. Uh, I'm trying to get really good at it. Um, uh, I love the way I'm coaching right now. And um, but I like this interview here is remarkable that we get to talk about this sport in, yeah. in, in a way that is uh, meaningful to not only you, but to countless of people who are going to watch. And um, that hasn't always been the case. And so I have all the time in the world for people that are trying to sell this sport to people because I think it's a remarkable sport. Well, then I'm going to take you up on that and we'll let you, we'll try and find a time where you have 15 minutes. That might be tough. And yeah. we'll, do the, we'll do the podcast with you and uh, maybe I'll get you to uh, teach me how to call the hogs like you guys do down there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you, yeah, YouTube it, you'll find it, but, um, but well, I don't yeah. want to YouTube. I want, I want a true, I want a true hog to teach uh, me. I don't want to learn on YouTube. I want a member of the staff. Okay. Teach. Yeah. You want the Australian that's coaching in Arkansas to help you call the hogs. All right. I'll do it. Yeah. We'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. It makes sense to me. <laughs> Perfect. All right, Jason. Thank you so much, man. Best of luck to you. Uh, we'll see you down the road. I know I'll see you in Vegas, uh, yeah. but good luck on the 15th. Good luck through program and thanks for your time, buddy. 
Cheers. Appreciate it immensely. Right. Thank you. Take care, Jason. Jason Watson, Arkansas Razorbacks, Elite Eight last year, moving forward. Take care.